Hi guys, straight into it today, we're doing firewall removal on this C540 cab, but it's the same as a W900 or any other classic Kenworth conventional. So, I'm just going to rip the wiring out to begin with, and we'll go from there. First things first, remove the glove box and the, um, the gauge panels, so dead simple. This is just held on by some Phillips head screwdrivers. Go to undo them, pull that little metal tab across, and it will pop out. The gauge clusters obviously remove the speed cable, uh, speedo cable, and for me it wasn't really an issue. Um, I just cut through all the wiring on the back of the gauges and then undid the uh, the airlines. But I'm rewiring this from scratch. Obviously, if you're taking this apart, you might want to actually undo the bolts that fasten the wires to the back of the gauges. So basically all the screws that were holding the radio and the CB mount in place, um, they were so corroded I was just stripping the heads. So I've ground a slit in them and going to take them out with a flathead. Had to do this for all, this, um, all the screws that run along the dash as well. So with that done, you can get access to the wiring loom and that's going to come out down the A pillar. I cut mine in the end but you can take it out in one piece if you're patient. Again, I'm replacing mine so it makes no difference to me. Now, all my screws that ran along the driver's side, lower dash, were corroded so I had to take out the clutch pedal switch there which you can see and then I was able to put a slit in one of them and uh, so, no sorry I think in two of them used the flat head and for the other one I had to die grind the head off um, I cut that vent panel out as well because it's not going back this whole side panel is being replaced if yours is good and you want to keep it all you've got to do is remove the flap and then knock those rivets out that run round it and the whole vent panel will just push out into the cab. Back in the cab now, to get the outer column piece off of the um, firewall mount, you've got to undo these six bolts. So there's two you can see there and then another two on, on top behind the dash which are a pain to get to. Undo them, the 916th bolt, or 916th head. Once they're away, you can simply pull the outer sheath or the outer mount off the firewall piece. And it's as simple as that. So this outer piece is on show, which means I'm going to sandblast it and it'll get painted metallic orange like the brake pedal is. And like the rest of the cab's going as well. Um, and now with that out of the way, I can get a die grinder on that bolt head, on that screw head easily and remove it. That's, well, not easily. It was a pain, but doable. So a die grinder and a grinding stone that I'd usually use for smoothing out cast iron after I've started the rough porting with carbide bits on um, on the cylinder heads. So I've got all the top screws out. There's still some at the bottom holding it in. And I'm just going to have a quick tidy up. The main thing here to remember is to disconnect all your airlines. So my diff lock switch was already disconnected. I don't know why. I'm going to have to investigate. But remember to undo that one. Um, I'm hoping my actuator's all right. But that's obviously been undone for a long, long time. Maybe when they swapped the axles over and rebuilt the cab. Originally they didn't... Um, they didn't refit it for whatever reason. So, yep, 
dash is loose. I'm going to start cutting my wiring loom out. Again, you could remove it in one piece because it all on plugs on, yeah, you see the plugs there on the left-hand side. They're all those plugs that go through the firewall, so you can just pull them through. Now, these are a pain to remove, those roll pins. So I used a set of mole grips and forced them through and then grabbed it with another set and kind of wiggled it until they popped out the bottom. You will start using swear words for that. Throw your nasty old wiring loom away or put it away nicely if it's a good loom you're going to reuse. And then once you disconnect the last of the airlines for the parking brakes, I literally just rip the manifold off the firewall because as you can see, mine's made of paper. Um, yeah, you're good. Pull the dash out, put it to one side and refurbish it later. You can see it's spider egg heaven in here. But basically what we're going to do now is run round the front side of the bulkhead or firewall and cut those hook bolts off. Um, from there you can punch them through. And you can see here, this is one of the dash supports that's broken. Um, years of, well, I guess either years of abuse or when it was crashed and tweaked the cab. Um, it's just damage those lightweight alley supports so I'll be remaking them out of something heavier gauge but anyway here we go so I'm putting a slit into the um, into the hock bolts or the, protru the protruding bit and then splitting them with a chisel to make sure I put as little heat as possible into the old fiberglass This is the only way you can remove the hock bolts because they're pretty permanent once they're done, just like a rivet. Anyway, um, speaking of rivets, you're gonna take a sharp chisel now and knock out the bottom two rows of rivets. The row of rivets closest to the door jam, or the A-pillar, and the uppermost row of rivets that runs along the bottom of the fiberglass. Now, for the uppermost row, I scored these with the grinder first, so I didn't have to put as much stress on them and hit them as hard to break them away. Because again, being very careful not to damage that old fiberglass, it's what, 42 years old now? And it's not that fragile, but at the same time, I didn't want to do any damage. You're gonna rinse and repeat for the other side, and then the firewall, will just come away. Um, in my case, it didn't quite do that because of some rust buildup on the inside that I had to get rid of, which I mistook for it being jammed on the block of wood. So ignore my messing about on that one. Just remove the power steering pump, um, sorry, the power steering reservoir because the rust in there on the inside of that steel bracket where it clamps together may well be all that's holding it together like it was on mine. So these are the rivets, as I said, you've got a row along the top, a row next to the door jam, and two rows along the bottom. For the ones at the top, put a downward slice into them with a cutting disc and then knock them off. The one right next to the door jam you'll struggle with, but don't worry because that one actually goes into steel. So just knock it off. Once you've got the ones along the top done and the ones that run down the side, it'll just come away. So. This is what I was on about um, with the power steering bracket. Mine had rusted and it was clamping it and I didn't realize that. 
So as soon as I actually cut those bolts off, those three along the top on the right hand side of the picture, um, it just came away. This whole mess here with me looking confused. Yeah, it was a waste of my time. Um, what I did added nothing to the process. So that's it off, um, take a moment to admire the carnage, the rust, all the crap, and we'll continue after. I will have to do a little bit of touch up with fibre fill um, and punch out some of these bolts because they've swollen with rust and just cracked the holes a little bit. But not the end of the world and a very easy fix. Same with the frame that you can see rusted out. Anyway, moving on from that carnage and back to this old frame that I made for the auto car. Good news, it turns out that the cab for the auto car was only half inch wider than the Kenworths so I'm going to repurpose this and use that front section as the new frame um, for the rotted out bit on the Kenworth and then I'm going to cut that sleeper in half at the back which will give me a 72 inch sleeper to go behind the cab oh yeah um, so some idiot ran into the autocar's bumper you can see some glass on the floor um, some on top of the bumper and some right in there I don't know how you didn't see that bumper because it is big and it'll win in a fight anyway that's it for this video um, next up I will be remanufacturing the firewall and you'll see this cab go back together <laughs> 